Hello everyone, I'm back again with another critique video. Today we have on the channel Lane Norton. Now, I've done a video on Lane before, but unfortunately it wasn't good enough quality whenever I was first making videos, so I deleted it. I saved that video in my playlist of videos to criticize, definitely. But this is actually a different one that I haven't seen before. It's called The Government Made Us Fat, but it's also sarcastically written clearly because Jordan Peterson was making the claim, and in many ways they really did. But Lane seems to ostensibly think something else, so we're gonna go ahead and see what he has to say about it, and um, well, see you then. As you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet, as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean that there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and or disease someone may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product, in doing such a thing is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule, known as Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any heart health outcome. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many others from the Cerule company, refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. What's up, guys? We're back. It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. Like, subscribe, comment, algorithm. Let's do this. So this week, I'm not going to enjoy, and I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for saying this, but we have uh, Jordan Peterson on What the Fitness, and I actually mostly like Jordan Peterson and what he says. I don't really get a lot of the controversy around the guy. A lot of the stuff I've seen... Well, the controversy comes from Gen Z and millennials being entitled and wanting to basically hedge against or rather foist any bit of responsibility that they actually hold and any sense of incumbency onto other people. It's indolence, it's entitlement. That's what that comes from, but anyway out is actually pretty positive and I like a lot of it but when he starts talking about diet and nutrition then it's when we're going to have problems no when you start talking about diet and nutrition that's when we are going to start having problems because you don't know what you're talking about you are the epitome of someone that has a PhD that stands for piled high and deep in horse <laughs> you are one of the reasons why people don't trust PhDs you are contributing to that so anyway I that I actually like quite a bit of what he says philosophy wise I was not a fan of Okay. Well, who cares what you're a fan of, Lane? Because what you're a fan of is not typically indicated dietarily or lifestyle-wise. Maybe lifestyle-wise. It's mainly diet that I see a lot of what you say. Just being absolutely incorrect. Recently, you were caught saying, well, not caught saying, but you just proudly pontificated upon the fact, the supposed fact, that saturated fat was worse than fructose in the diet. It's like when these people freak out about fructose and, and liver fat. Okay, but we have studies comparing straight up fructose overfeeding, saturated fat overfeeding. I think fructose overfeeding increased liver fat by like, I don't know, like 20% or something like that. Which by the way, wasn't really different from overfeeding any other source of carbohydrate. Saturated fat increased by like 78%. Yeah, yeah. Credible, credible he is, credible you are Lane. Say, and this is on the Lion Diet Instagram. The Lion Diet is from his daughter. I got into a Twitter, I guess, spat with her is the best way to describe it because she was. Of course you did. Of course you f***ing did, Lane. Because you're a child. I don't know what he's referring to, but of course you f***ing got into one. You're arrogant beyond belief and complacent. Waiting for it was either red meat consumption or raw red meat consumption for like little infants and I kind of like red meat consumption is totally indicated for infants for four and a half million years our primary source of food in other words fuel if you include protohumans that preceded our current speciation that being homo sapiens sapiens has been primarily the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals mostly we didn't just start eating that when we were teenagers or something or adults we started eating it when we were infants it's breast milk and then meat okay it's totally f***ing fine. Benign and innocuous, not even that. Beneficial, salubrious, health-promoting. For her evidence and her response. You don't know how to interpret evidence or cite any evidence. Anyway, let's look at this. When you have kids, let's get them to race. I'm betting on mine. Hope you have a wonderful night, Lane. That's a good response, Michaela. It's snarky and that's indicated. That is appropriate. When talking to someone like Lane f***ing Norton. Lane Norton, I have two kids, thank you. What the f*** does racing have to do with unqualified people speaking authoritatively about topics they aren't trained in? Being trained in something is very synonymous nowadays in people's language with being indoctrinated. You are indoctrinated, Lane. You are someone that has a PhD and still doesn't know what the f*** 
they're talking about. Let me say something real quick. Credibility is not conferred upon someone based on the credence administered to them by an institution or governing body that is, quite frankly, an indoctrination camp, like I keep saying. It is conferred upon people based upon how sagacious you prove to be, how perspicacious you prove to be, and how well or adroitly you can actually interpret and articulate data that you find and research that you find. And conduct it. How objectively can you? How disciplined can you? All of these factors actually aggregated together allow for one to have credibility conferred upon them. Not a plaque given by a governing body or mainstream institution that is possessed by rapaciousness and cupidity. Lane f***ing Norton. You are not adroit or sagacious or perspicacious at all. You have muscle. And therefore people take you and what you say with no grains of salt whatsoever. At face value because you look good and that leaves enough of an impression for people to just listen to what you have to say. <laughs> Give me a break. Anyway, oh wait, I get it. You were taking a shot at my kids. No, you absolute f***ing umbrageous ass. Holy sh**. Petulant, querulous child. Very classy of you. Talk about class, Lane. For you to talk about class, are you f***ing kidding me? And her response was, we should have our kids race and see who wins. Anyways, here's the video. Dietary recommendation to prioritize carbohydrates produced a veritable epidemic of obesity and diabetes, resulting- It- basically did promote as a cause and effect statement though, so it's hard to actually say that objectively, Jordan. But you know that, and I know that you know that because you are a research scientist yourself, and you're extremely disciplined with how you apply science and how you interpret it. So I know what you're saying. Yes, unfortunately, the 1977 USDA guidelines to actually promote the less consumption or the lack of consumption of saturated fat and cholesterol since they caused heart disease, quote unquote, were not only false but fraudulent. And it was proven in 2015, it was published in the Journal of American Medical Association, internal documentation from the Sugar Research Foundation themselves from the UCSF, detailing in their own words and documentation once again, how they paid off three Harvard professors to falsify data and manipulate papers to suggest that cholesterol and saturated fat were causing heart disease, all while exculpating and exonerating sugar. And then one of those professors, Dr. Mark Hegstead, became the head of the USDA soon after and helped to author the 1977 USDA guidelines to eat less fat and cholesterol since they supposedly caused heart disease, which led to, over the course of 1977 and 1980, an over 18% decrease in the consumption of red meat in the United States, which has been steadily declining ever f***ing since. And also, you should look at the trends in obesity since then. Go ahead and do that. Obesity trends have really been going up since 1911, though, and that's due to seed oils, but anyway. What has been de Ostensibly, technically, but by reliable researchers as one of the worst public health disasters of all time. Yep, it is. It absolutely is. And by the way, guys, where do carbohydrates come from? Do they come from animal products? Not unless you're talking about some forms of dairy. Completely omit dairy. Where do they come from? Oh yeah, um, plants. Jordan's been on the right track dietarily for quite some time. So is Michaela. Almost the entire Western population to a lifetime of ca It's going to be very soon the entire world. India is already succumbing to that. They have been for a while. Mainly because the religion promotes plant-based diets, Catastrophic chronic health problems. Remember what happened the last time that government agencies applied their tender mercy to determining what the people they serve should consume? Exactly. Exactly. Jordan is on point, just like usual. Just like usual. Wonder what Lane has to say about this, because so far, nothing Jordan has said has been problematic. Once again, it's been quite judicious. We're offered the much vaunted food pyramid, telling us to eat. Just covered that. 6 to 11 servings of grains and carbohydrates a day. Exactly. 6 to 11 f***ing servings of grains. First of all, you shouldn't be eating three meals a day. That almost insinuates to eat more than that with snacks in between. That's really what it was saying. I was taught that in school. 6 to 11 servings of grains. Absolutely insane. Not to mention there's lectins in there that launch immune responses utilizing molecular mimicry. There's oxalates in there, especially if you're talking about things like oats. Phytates lead to nutrient deficiencies by binding to iron and zinc within the stomach acid, but not iron and zinc from meat, apparently. Plant toxins. Horrible. But yes, the carbohydrates as well, which also is a plant toxin, but anyway. Protein and fat at the pinnacle, something to be indulged in with comparative rarity, if indeed necessary at all. Yeah, just, just abysmal, just abhorrent and asinine, and also sordid. It is immoral. It is evil, misanthropic from these miscreants, squalid miscreants turned out to be wrong and not yes and it did turn out to be wrong and we know that on a biochemical basis and actually have known that for even longer than these guidelines have been in place carbohydrates causally exacerbate cancer first of all warburg effect look into it binge my channel if you don't know what that is i talk about it in further detail in other videos and also even in vastly small concentrations destroy lipid rafts tear some membranes to pieces bind to dna to promote carcinogenesis by causing mutations to it and in a high enough concentration but still relatively low kill cells outright so there you go. They're completely unnecessary for human survival, exogenously speaking. Not one gram of carbohydrate is required for human consumption. Not only is it not required, it is not indicated for human consumption either.
It's a little wrong, but so wrong that it might as well have been not just wrong, but a veritable anti-truth. Anti-truth. It's one of the things that Jordan talks about a lot. He's been using that word and that term for quite some time now, actually. And it is entirely justified and entirely true. If something is so diametrically antithetical to the truth, then it is not only a lie or a falsehood. It is an anti-truth. As wrong as it could possibly get, the food pyramid was brought into being not least by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Yes, the USDA just covered that. By marketers, not scientists or nutritionists. True, exactly. Sorry, Lane, not one thing he has said has been false thus far. No shortage whatsoever of lobby efforts by those whose products ended up being promoted. So first off, I'm going to get what he got right. Yes, there are lobbyists for the agricultural industry, by the way. Yes, correct. Lobbyists for basically every single industry, though, even the meat industry, so this is an unfair argument. Also lobbyist for the meat and dairy. Well, there you go. There you go. See? Yeah, we understand that. That's not the point. That was not the point of his video, was it? Industry and whatnot. The Food Guide Pyramid advocated for reducing meat consumption, increasing uh, consumption of whole grains. Misanthropic. Absolute misanthropic nonsense. Fraudulent and vegetables and yes ever since that was instituted people got fatter there's yes that's an association to be extremely fair though it is just an association technically but again i go off of biochemistry and we know these things to be contraindicated for those reasons and insalubrious for those reasons not just based on one little association or one large one really one tiny problem with this story not really, actually. There's not a problem with the story at all. You have a bachelor's in biochemistry, Lane. You should know this sh In fact, I'm pretty sure you do. You were just possessed by ideology. You should listen to some Jordan Peterson, because he talks about people like those, too. Ideologues? It's one of his most salient topics of discussion. People didn't follow it! Um, actually, Lane, after the implementation, once again to iterate, of the 1977 USDA guidelines that discouraged the consumption of fat and cholesterol since they supposedly caused heart disease, red meat consumption in the United States went down by over 18% and has been steadily declining ever f***ing since. Now, one can infer, once again to use the word judiciously, they can infer that with that lack of red meat, something else rose commensurately in terms of the consumption of such thing or food in these people, particularly f***ing grains, plants in general. And where the f*** do carbohydrates come from? <gasps> plants. Yes, they ate more carbohydrates. Yes, they ate more grains. They also ate more sugar. I want you guys to be very careful. I want you guys to be very, very, very observant here. You are seeing dopaminergic and stimulating editing in order to make people have a better impression of them. Pay attention to that and separate the good editing from the person and their words. That includes my videos too. Don't look at the editing. I do it to make it more digestible for you to watch. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Then come to your decision as to whether I'm credible or not. And same thing with Lane and everyone else that you watch. Because that, that's the trick that they'll pull on you. They make the whole video meretricious. Attractively showy and lively on the surface, but underneath it all, having little to no value or meaning. And that's what this is. More total calories. Nope. Calories are the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water around a closed thermodynamic system, also known as a bomb calorimeter lane, by one degree Celsius. They are therefore, informally speaking, units of heat energy. And here's the thing about energy lane. The human body doesn't absorb energy. It absorbs mass or matter. So no, you can't eat calories. Every single person on this planet has a necessary dietary intake of calories of zero. So stop talking about calories. Fats, they didn't increase their level. Fats, really? Are you kidding me? Unless you're talking about polyunsaturated fatty acids, Lane f***ing Norton, which yes, then you are correct about, but fat is a very general term. Are you talking about saturated fat? Because that is not true, in fact. Not really. People eat seed oils and carbohydrates and plants. That's what they f***ing eat. Exercise, they did not increase fruit and vegetable consumption. In fact, I think... Oh my god. No, they didn't. You're correct. Fruits and vegetables, though, are not indicated for human physiology. We've been eating plants and fruit, really plants in any significant amount, for 13,000 years as an overestimate. We have existed as a current species for 350,000 years, and if you include all proto-humans that preceded us that also ate the exact same f***ing diet, because we evolved from them, four and a half million. Now, let me ask you something, Lane. What is 13,000 divided by four and a half million converted into a percentage? What is 13,000 divided by 350,000 converted into a percentage? Because that is the amount of time, or the percentage of time as a species that we have eaten plants in any significant amount. Not to mention the fact that fruit nowadays, even a hundred years ago, fruit was nothing like it is today. Hybridized to be starchier, sweeter, bigger. Starchier is in reference to things like sweet potatoes, though. We're talking about all plants. 99% of plants you see in the supermarket are man f***ing made. And it's because all of the other plants that aren't man made will typically kill you upon consumption. Wonder why that is. Oh, maybe because plants are toxic and they always have been. No matter how much you're going to hybridize a plant, they will be toxic. Even if you get rid of all of the anti-nutrients, there's still the exorbitant level and excessive level of carbohydrates. So anyway,
anyway, Lane, no, even though they didn't do that, you're correct, that doesn't matter. They did increase their consumption of plants and plant oils, particularly also carbohydrates. If you've watched my videos long enough, or if you've read my book, you'll know how important it is to ground electrically to the earth. However, I am of course aware of the fact that this is impractical for many people, whether it be due to work or some other interfering lifestyle factor. But there is good news, however, which is that there is a particular machine that makes water infused with hydrogen ions that when drunk recreate the exact same effects of grounding without the need to actually be physically grounded to the earth. This makes it much easier to reap the same benefits of grounding if one has no access to the physical earth or a grounding mat throughout the day. If you want to learn more about this machine, like where to buy it and how it works, refer to the links in the description below. Down. This idea that we like followed the food guide pyramid. Yeah, we followed the one. Yeah, people did. You're right. They didn't follow all of it and you are correct and I'll let you have that. That's fine. This doesn't make you any more correct. He is correct in saying that the whole carbohydrate laden diet that was really imposed and foisted upon, at least the ideology was foisted and imposed upon everyone fallaciously, fraudulently, rapaciously, cupidinously, etc, etc, is one of the causes clearly, patently, demonstrably of the obesity epidemic in the United States and really the entire Western world. See oils is the bigger problem though. Carbohydrates are the second biggest. I will never back down on that one. Seed oils are an absolute bane. And I'm using both definitions of that word, by the way. Which was increased consumption of grains. And then we obliterated everything else off that. I mean, I think you could argue that actually meat consumption has gone up too, but I, I'd have... <sighs> No, not red meat consumption. Red meat being the primary, or at least what is indicated to be our primary food source, if not exclusive food source, actually, as established unequivocally by stable nitrogen and carbon isotope analysis conducted on the long bones of ancient human remains, blah, blah, blah. Totally check on that. It certainly didn't go down. And I'm not advocating- Are you f***ing kidding me, Lane? It's right there in the open. It'll be on the screen now. It's also referenced in my book, Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. Axioms that Lane here likes to promulgate. Please buy that when it's out. We're aiming for March 1st of this year, but we'll see what happens. For reducing meat consumption, I think that meat is a high quality protein source. We've talked many times about it. I Lane, it's actually a very good thing and it's refreshing to hear that you like meat. It's good, but you are also still an execrable, meek, obsequious and a juvenile child when it comes to this stuff and also are not sagacious at all. You are not able to mentally discern between research and interpret it well. As a PhD, it's pretty impressive. Can't even get the fundamental elements of science down. And you were gratuitously an asshole to people. Just unwarranted and uncalled for. And once again, juvenile. You saw that at the beginning in his response. Protein guy. And so, yes, I also agree that... Of course you're a protein guy. Yes, you have to be. Yes. Guide pyramid saying that protein should be a smaller amount of your daily intake. I it didn't actually necessarily say that. Jordan sort of insinuated that and that's not what it did. Even he was technically incorrect. I don't hold Jordan accountable for it. We understood what he was saying. But no, it said to keep red meat low and oils low. That's what it said. It didn't say to keep protein low. In fact, they actually promoted protein consumption just from plants instead. It was a mistake. But again, People didn't follow the food guide pyramid at all. No, they did, actually. You're right to say that they didn't follow all of it, but the elements that they followed definitely very, very strongly are associated with the obesity epidemic. Once again, though, seed oils are worse than carbohydrates and grains. Exercise more, eat less. Okay, typically when they say exercise, they're talking about the wrong kinds of exercise. So even that would have probably perpetuated the issue, which by the way, a lot of people do in fact do the wrong kinds of exercise and do see that perpetuation or maintenance of obesity or overweight status as a result. Many people are actually exercising more. So even then you're underestimating how many people actually do that. And also you're in the middle of saying eat less calories. We already covered that lane. You can't eat calories. Stop. Even to be on an informal basis, you're talking about eating less food. That is not indicated. You should eat until say tidy, comfortably stuffed as Ken Berry likes to say of the indicated foods for human beings, which once again was established unequivocally to be the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals primarily. Eggs are fine as well. Added fat in the form of saturated fat, the stuff solid at room temperature, straight hydrocarbon chains biochemically speaking, in the forms of butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee. Added salt and water to taste. We know this. That's cause and effect data, Lane. Please minimize sugar. Minimize added oil. Minimize sugar. What are carbohydrates, Lane? F me, guys. What the f are carbohydrates, Lane? Minimize added oils. People do you're right about the oils part, and it was because saturated fat was what was demonized. The USDA food pyramid said that oils should be at the top, but the same people that administered or at least gave the go-ahead for the USDA food pyramid to be even released also said that oils were better than saturated fat! 
Look at that. In fact, in the last 50 years, I believe the number one source of calories is not calories is added fats that's because fat on a calorie basis is more than that of carbohydrates it's nine calories per gram for fat and four calories per gram of carbohydrates so even though people could be eating more carbohydrates than fat which they fucking are lane the number of calories would be lower or at least be inclined to be lower than the calories from fat which is why you shouldn't be looking at calories since you can't fucking eat those anyway he's gawping at me right now look at him this is the problem with people who speak outside their area of expertise. Wow. Oh, the arrogance lane. You are an example of the problem of people that speak within their supposed expertise that they claim to be an expertise, which is really just a degree in indoctrination. You people are dangerous and go f themselves, especially when you're told and confronted by people that do know what they're talking about more than you do, and you denigrate them and disparage them in a juvenile fashion, especially when you act like that, like a petulant, whiny child. One of your videos, you talked about mansplaining. So, Paul, and to anyone watching, the next time you feel the need to mansplain to cancer patients about why they should be eating healthier, you can take your opinion and you can shove it up your ass. Mansplain. 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 Give me a fucking break, you obsequious ass. When they don't actually understand the research. Wow. Projection. You don't understand research. Recently, you just said, once again, should I show it again? You said that fructose is more benign than saturated fat. You said saturated fat was more harmful than fructose, and it was clear with the research. It's like when these people freak out about fructose and liver fat. We have studies comparing straight up fructose overfeeding, saturated fat overfeeding. I think fructose overfeeding increased liver fat by like 20% or something like that. Saturated fat increased by like 78%. Yeah. Partly right. And he's right. No, he is entirely correct, Lane. You are incorrect. Erroneous. You propagandist machine. You meathead. Enough to make a cogent argument. You can't make cogent arguments, Lane. Your arguments aren't cogent. Jordan made a cogent argument, and not only because he can articulate his thoughts better than you can, and better than I can, by the way, but because what he says is rooted in truth and sagacious interpretation of research. Him being a research scientist himself in the field of psychoanalytic theory sounds good. The reality is he's very wrong. No, he's not. You are wrong. About specific things that basically make his entire argument invalid. I they do not make his argument invalid. You are incorrect once again. Is it trite yet? Have I said it enough? I'm not saying that the food guide pyramid is the best way to eat. It's honestly probably one of the worst ways to eat because it promotes a standard American diet. It's still a mixed meal that it promotes. It would honestly be better if the food pyramid were vegan. Even then that would be horrible though. I believe and I'm an advocate for high protein intake from lean proteins. No, you should advocate for moderate protein intake from appropriate sources. And I just covered what those sources are. High fat intake of the indicated kind as well. Saturated, no carbohydrates to speak of whatsoever, no plant material. Processed food consumption. So you can what does processed food mean? You need to be extremely accurate and very, very direct and explicit when you say processed food. Meat is processed. Eggs are processed. You mean ultra processed or as colloquially deemed ultra processed like Twinkies and Ding Dongs. Say that. All overall calories. No, nope, calories covered that. For exercising more. What the kind of what kind of exercise are you talking about? That's important. Hopefully you mean strictly weightlifting. And even then, that's still good. I'm not going to denigrate or disparage him for promoting weightlifting. I sort of go the extra mile and I say variable resistance training in particular with devices that actually impose the correct indicated force for human beings. But anyway, next. Is we have teams now in nutrition. And it's not about getting out. Yeah, I'm not a part of a team though. See, this is the thing. Nowadays what we have and the point that he's trying to make is that people have an ideology that they adopt and every single thing that they do and research and everything, they manipulate and falsify in order to subserve the desires for the research that they're conducting to actually meet their ideology and conform with it. I'm the opposite. I have my own coterie that I'm a part of, but it's not because I insinuated myself within that coterie first and then therefore do this content in order to satisfy my ideological desires. It's the opposite. What happened is I did the objective reviews and studying. Sagaciously, I did so. And then I came across and found the carnivore diet seems to be the indicated diet for human beings. And honestly, it's very, very obvious whenever you start to separate yourself from the propaganda that we've been taught for 20 years for me, 20 years my existence. Then it becomes extremely obvious that that's exactly what we should be doing and should have been doing for the entirety of the four and a half million years that we've existed. Jordan Peterson is not part of one of the crowds that you're talking about. So false. Just, just stop talking about Jordan like he is false here and part of some ideology himself and just conforming to it and is an ideologue or behaving as such when he is the number one proponent against ideologues.
right information. It's about my team winning. It's almost like- Yeah, no, it, that's exactly what you are. You were part of the meathead fitness industry, part of the Greg Doucette part of the industry, and the Sean Nalawini part of the industry. Politics now. So when- Yes, it f***ing is, and you're not helping. Study comes out, people don't look at it and go, hmm, let's read that open-minded and see what the data actually says. No, you see, you don't know how to interpret it. You read the conclusion and you read the abstract, don't you? If you look at the data, I'm sure that you have some capacity to do so if you're a PhD. I don't know if you're a PhD in research methods and statistics though. That's the thing. If you aren't, then f*** right off because you and I have the same capacity, if not me having more to interpret that than you do. All the information you learned in school is available right at my fingertips for free. It's just the plaque that's not. It's the plaque that you have to pay tens of thousands of dollars for. I'm getting better information than you are though, Lane, if you went to school and the only information that you're operating under is the stuff that you learned from your indoctrination camp. Just FYI. The right answer. They look at it and if they perceive it as a threat to their team, they're going to debunk it. Before it's an impulsive, visceral response by ideologues. That's what happens. Even by normal people that aren't ideologues, it is a natural human inclination to form factions. It's just important that you are conscientious enough of that proclivity to form factions in order to actually curtail the degree to which you follow or abide by an ideology tribally in a primitive fashion. I haven't read it. I'm not saying I don't have bias. Of course I do, I'm a human. Exactly, yes. But when I go into looking at any study, I go into it, in the back of my mind saying, it is possible that what I believe to be true is not true. And I need to question even the most fundamental things that I hold true. Right, so you're trying to appear as if you're moral and sort of in a sanctimonious fashion and magnanimous as well in order to aggrandize yourself and make yourself be perceived as better by your viewers and objective and therefore make it more probable that they'll adopt your ideology in what you say about eating. It's very manipulative. I know exactly what people sound like when they do this. Everyone does. That is what you're doing because in fact you don't act like that and it's proven in every other instance in which people prove you wrong. There are professors that have tried to put you right where you're wrong. One in particular, and I think we all know who I'm talking about. And instead of actually thinking, well, maybe I'm wrong and maybe he's right. Instead, what you do is you say that he's not a professor at all and he never was one. That's petulant and juvenile. And that is not an exhibition of behavior that you are saying that you do exhibit. You are a liar, Lane. An absolute f***ing liar. In terms of my you know, psychopaths do that, right? They try and make themselves be perceived as better people than they actually are, but they don't do it pretty well because they're psychopaths, so they don't really know how to empathize. I'm not saying he's a psychopath. It's just probably don't want to mimic that behavior. Beliefs or hypotheses or conclusions based on the current data. If I have a very strong- Yeah, you don't do that. You don't actually do what you're saying you do. So false. Anyway, moving on. Opinion about the data based on decades of research. No, I... not actual scientific research that you're talking about in terms of human nutrition science. No, nope, we don't have any of that. We never will, by the way, as a consequence of human nutrition science's intrinsic unscientific nature. <laughs> not just gonna flip flop that opinion based on one study. It's gonna take a lot of studies for me to change that opinion. This right, no, it's actually not, no. You do the exact same thing that you just said that everyone else does. In Jordan Peterson. Your implications are that Jordan Peterson fucking does that. Jordan fucking Peterson does not do that. Digging in and entrenching ourselves in a belief because I believe I can eat an all-meat diet or I'm a vegan. Yes, because you can and you should. <sighs> Holy sh Or I think intermittent fasting is the best thing or low carb, whatever. It is killing actual nutrition science because it's there is no such thing as true objective human nutrition science of any veracity or any utility if you knew how to interpret science you would know that not about getting the right recommendations now you complacent sanctimonious asshole just had to throw that in there again uh, showing that my team is right yeah pretentious the food guide pyramid came out yes people got fatter and sicker yep no they did not actually follow it they, uh, they followed a lot of it. They followed the most salient parts of it. One small portion of it and everything else. No, not one small portion. More than that, actually. Dismissed. Still like a lot of what Jordan Peterson has to say, philosophy. Okay, no one cares. You got this wrong and it's Peyton. And I made it Peyton. For all of my viewers, my lovely, lovely viewers here, I made it Peyton. If it wasn't Peyton enough already. Guys, I'll make a deal with Jordan. I'll stay out of philosophy if he stays out of nutrition. All right, guys. Hope <sighs> He would be much, 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 and has been proven to be a much, much better espouser of nutrition information than you are and that you have. Video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Absolutely not. If you're subscribed to Lane, unsubscribe now. Unlike all of his videos if you can. Catch you next week.
Right. Whatever. Yep. Nonsense like I expected from Lane. Doesn't know what he's talking about whatsoever. A guy that, once again, is completely complacent. Also is someone who is pretentious. Once again, a liar. He tries to make himself be perceived as someone better so as to make himself seem more believable by other people. And an absolute petulant child whenever he's proven wrong about anything. So, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel, please comment your thoughts below. Also, most importantly, subscribe to the Patreon. I have a $1 a month tier, a $5 a month tier, and an $8 a month tier to gain access to ad-free uploads, one week early uploads, one extra upload per week, uncensored content, and with unblurred pop-up references on screen. By my book, Contraindicated, as I alluded to earlier, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. Trying to get that out by March 1st, like I said, by the physical copy, whether it be the paperback or the hardcover, by the ebook or by the audiobook, which will be recorded in my own voice. I'm all about authenticity. Also, please click the link you see on the screen below for the Cerule products, or if you're curious about them and you want to learn about them first, which of course I encourage you to do, refer to the links in the description below. There's two in particular. I have one video that I uploaded referring to Cerule products and describing them and elucidating them in pretty deep detail. Also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or X, and TikTok, and email me at edgoki14 at gmail.com if you have any questions. I'll try to get to those as fast as possible, or if you have any videos that you want to have me react to in particular. I do have a superfluous stash in my little abditory on YouTube though. So we'll see. I'll try to get to those as well and I'll try to look at them. But with that being said, I will see you guys next time whenever we react to someone else who doesn't understand anything about research methods, statistics, biochemistry, human physiology, anatomy, paleoanthropology. Pick one. Physics. I will see you then.